Nah, this is an NVIDIA RTX 4080 GPU. Now I'm gonna put it down before I drop it. Eey. But this is the Founders Edition and this comes with 16 gigabytes of their DDR6X video RAM. Now this was sent to me by NVIDIA. So firstly, thank you very much NVIDIA for sending this over. And secondly, this is a sponsor video because NVIDIA have sent this to me. I do get to keep it. I'm gonna put it in my PC and it's probably gonna stay there for the foreseeable future. So I just wanted to make that nice and clear from the outset. But in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna shove this in and we're just gonna run some basic tests. Nothing too complicated. I just wanna know how this thing performs and how it stacks up against my old GPU when doing some of the GPU accelerated effects within DaVinci Resolve. So we're just gonna have a play. We're gonna run through some of them and see how it performs. Now they've improved basically everything. We've got more CUDA cores, which are just the general grunt. We've got more tensor cores, or at least better tensor cores, which should mean that we get better performance with the AI based effects within DaVinci Resolve, things like magic mask and that sort of thing. But one of the key things, one of the main big selling points of these, there's now two hardware accelerated encoders in here. So you should in theory get twice as fast exports or you can export your videos in half the time. And as well as that, they have support for the latest AV1 codec. AV1 is basically the latest and greatest video codec. You had H.264, which has been around for a while. It does the job, but it's not that efficient. H.265 is a more efficient version, which means you can get better quality videos for the same file sizes. AV1 just takes that another step further, which means you can use really low bit rates and still get really good looking footage. So we're gonna have a little bit of a play with that as well, and then just see how fast everything renders. Right, we're back, 4080 installed, and I've just downloaded and installed the latest NVIDIA Studio drivers. So we should be good to go. Now, the first thing I'm really interested in is those export speeds. I'm interested in having a little play with the AV1, see how quickly that exports, and using the, the dual encoders to see if it really is twice as fast. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve and have a quick look at that. Now we're gonna start off with something really simple. This is a, how long is this? Nine minutes and 20 seconds. This is actually just an OBS recording because I record all my videos using OBS. So I have my camera just go into a capture card and I switch between the desktop and record everything in OBS. A lot of you Twitch streamers, gamers out there probably do something very similar. So it should be quite a good little test. So let's jump into the deliver page. And this was the export I ran off. You can see test from 3090 MP4, and it did it in one minute and 31 seconds. So we're just gonna come in here and we change this to be an AV1. We're gonna do AV1 NVIDIA 4K preset very fast. Add new job. Editor Alex here with some additional information I forgot to mention. To make use of the dual encoders on these 40 series cards, you need to make sure your resolution is ultra HD or above. And then there's these two new presets down here. You need to make sure that preset is to faster or above. I've gone with very fast. And then tuning is set to high quality. If you was to set the resolution to say 1080p and the preset to medium, it wouldn't use the dual encoders. It'd just use one of the encoders. So you probably wouldn't see as much of a speed boost. So there you go. More information, the better. Right, back to the video. And now let's see how quick this is. And that's a lot of frames. 280 frames, 290 frames, 51 seconds. So yeah, more or less, give or take twice as quick. Not quite, but not far off. Now that 3090 test originally was done without OBS running because I didn't need to be screen recording. So maybe that makes a difference. But yeah, near as makes no difference, twice as fast. I've never nearly hit 300 frames before. Usually the highest I get is maybe 140, 150. So yeah, that was quick. I'm impressed with that. 51 seconds. 51 seconds to do a nine minute video. Obviously it won't always be that quick. If you've got other effects, you've got noise reduction, you've got other things, we'll slow it down. But if you're just dumping in something from OBS and you wanna just cut it up, convert it into a different format for YouTube, you, you probably will be that quick. So that's impressive. Now I wanna try something else, I wanna try an actual project. So I'm gonna hop into my DaVinci Resolve for iPad video using AV1 and the dual encoders to see how quick that goes. So, mm. so this is gonna be likely be a more realistic test because we have got some other visual elements going on, this, that, and the other. So let's see how this does. 
Now the previous was done in 3 minutes 42. So again, we're gonna copy that. That was MP4 H.265. Let's change this to AV1. Make sure we're using the AV1 encoder. Again, same preset, everything as before. Add new job. Let's change this to be 4080. And render. That is really fast. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's really quick. Near, again, nearing 200 frames, 100 and somewhere between 170 and 200 ish frames for this. One minute and 26 seconds. So, yeah, that was over twice as fast. Why was that over twice as fast? I don't know, but that was really quick. So, again, that was an eight minute 30 video. That was an actual edit one which I would upload to YouTube. Again, it's just an OBS recording, so it's an MP4, but obviously I've got my sound effects on there, you know, my noise reduction, all that sort of stuff. There's some titles, some pop-ins, as well as some other footage, some images, all that sort of thing. So yeah, one minute, 26 seconds. That is really, really quick. All right, so just one last quick test. All of this footage here, this is from an A74. It's H.264, 24 frames, 4K, and it's 8-bit footage. Now, this is my Resolve Con vlog. It's just over six minutes long. It's all chopped together, a bit of color grading, all that sort of stuff. So let's see how quick this is using the AV1. We'll set the preset very fast. Everything else is all good to go. So let's have a look. Straight away, we've seen about 150-ish frames, which is already quicker than I've ever seen before when using A7 footage. So yeah, let's see how long this takes, shall we? And there we go. That one was done in just one minute and 18 seconds. Pretty quick. Right, with that out of the way, let's start having a play with some of the general GPU accelerated effects. And this is the simple little timeline we're gonna be working on. Now, all of this footage is Blackmagic Raw. It's from a 6K Pro, and it's recorded at 6K, 25 frames per second. Some of these are actually 50 frames per second, and then one of these, I think it's the end one, it is, this is like 2.5K, but it's all Blackmagic Raw, and generally most of it is 6K resolution. Now, I don't know many people working on 6K timelines because really there's not much need for 6K footage these days. So the timeline is actually set to Ultra HD, 25 frames per second. I've gone with Ultra HD rather than the 4K DCI because the footage is in 16 by 9 so Ultra HD made the most sense. So for this first clip, we're going to go do something quite demanding in DaVinci Resolve and that's noise reduction. So we're just going to hop into colour. We're going to come to our noise reduction, and the first thing, let's just try five frames of tempo or noise reduction. Better, set everything to about 20, hit play, and that gets us real-time playback, no problem whatsoever. Now, it's also important to note, I've already added a color space transform to every single clip in here, because that's something that you would just normally do, so we've added that on as well, just for a bit of a standard sort of test. So five frames, we get absolutely no problem whatsoever. Let's just turn all of that off. Let's just go with better for spatial. Bump this up a bit, hit play. No problems whatsoever. Let's add, let's go with three frames initially of temporal as well. And now we're starting to drop a couple of frames. So I'm going to just set the spatial back to faster. Hit play. Real time, let's go with five frames. Drop in two frames. This is a 25 frames per second timeline, but we're really close. That's with both temporal and spatial on. If we set those both to better, we'd probably start to drop a couple of frames. Yeah, with both on, we're down to about 15 or 16, but that's still not bad. 6K footage, 4K timeline with basically all of the noise reduction on in its best form. If we were to change the playback to half, I bet we'll get full real time with no issues. Yeah, we do. I bet we could even go enhanced on that. Yeah, so we can have all of the noise reduction on its best quality just by changing the playback resolution to half. No issues whatsoever. Nice. Now, next clip, we've got this farmer just in the field, and I just want to see how the magic mask does. So we've got no magic mask at the moment, so we're just going to draw our little line. We're going to toggle on our overlay. Oh, that was quick, it's picked them up already. Let's hit play. And that's 
tracking that really quick. It's not quite real time, although that's not far off, is it? That's maybe just under real time, I think. A smidge. For reference, I actually did the Magic Masks using my 3090, so I've put that overlay on here as well. From memory, I think this is faster. That looks faster. Not by much, but it definitely feels faster than the 3090 did it. We can scrub through this. No issues at all. Let me just show you. This is all back on full. We can cut this around, delete sections, and it's all, yeah, it's all happy as Larry. That's pretty good. Next one, this has got the dreaded speed warp. So this clip is running at 50%, retime scaling, optical flow, and speed warp. Now this is really taxing on any system. And as you'd expect, we can't play this back. Let me go to the color page because you get more accurate frames within here. And we're getting six to eight ish frames per second. Now, again, I tested this on the 3090 and it was more in the range of about three, four, five, six ish. So probably not double on the 4080, but you're definitely seeing a bit of an increase on the 4080 over the 3090. Again, I'm gonna change my proxy. This is almost unheard of to be able to do this. Remember, 6K footage, 4K timeline, all I've done is set the timeline proxy to, to half, and if I hit play, we get real-time playback. So I can apply speed warp. Let's make this longer. I can use speed warp playing this clip at 50% in real time. We can cut this up. And we can actually edit it like normal with speed warp on. That's mad. Right, at this point, I got a bit distracted. It was great seeing Blackmagic Raw, 4K, 6K, all that sort of stuff. But it got me thinking, and I got the urge, to just try some more regular footage on a 1080p timeline. So here's your bog standard 1080p timeline. And let's just grab a random piece of stock footage, which is 4K H.264. And really quickly, let's just go 20% speed. Optical flow, speed warp, hit play, and it just works. There's no waiting, there's no rendering, there's no caching, there's, it just plays. It's full 24 frames. That's mad. Anyone that's tried to use speed warp, I know this is only 1080p, but anyone that's ever tried to use speed warp in the past knows that that's not very common. Now, next I've got this Lumix footage. This is actually DCI 4K from my own Lumix camera. We'll go 50%, optical flow, speed warp, play. Drop in a few frames, let's just go to the color page. Now it's caught up and we've got 24 frames. Craziness. Magic mask, straight on, play. Look how quick that is. That's faster than real time. Probably two times real time, maybe. Obviously, testing the high end, Blackmagic Raw is really interesting, but just seeing how quick it works on a bog standard 1080p timeline is actually equally as impressive. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to the other one. Now for our last clip, this one here, this is still Blackmagic Raw 25 frames, but it wasn't recorded at 6K. It was actually recorded at a much lower resolution. So we're gonna bump this up using Super Scale. So all we need to do, locate it within the media pool, right click, go to Clip Attributes, make sure we're on the Video tab, and then we've got Super Scale down here. So we're gonna select the drop down. Let's just start off with times two for now. We'll go high and high, and then click on OK. Now, if you don't know, super scaling in DaVinci Resolve in the studio version is a really neat feature, and basically it will blow up footage. So if you've got 1080p footage, but you're working on a 4K timeline, it's a really smart AI-based way of just basically making that footage 4K and making it look really nice and really sharp. But it is pretty intensive. And at times two, we do get 25 frames per second. It seems to be playing back, no issues whatsoever playing back really well actually let's try and just combine super scaling with something else so let's jump into the color page let's see if we can track see if that will pick him up which it has done and then we're going to hit play and see if it'll track 
So that tracked that really, really quickly. So let's just go back to edit. This has got a magic mask on it. We're not applied any effects, but magic mask is running. We've still got 25 frames per second. So let's jump into the color page. Let's just do another node. Let's just be nice and we'll start off with two frames of temporal noise reduction. And we are now dropping frames, but it's still, oh, it's very close. Oh no, it's caught up. And now we're getting real time. All right, let's try five. I bet it can't do five. No, now we are dropping frames. I wonder if we change the timeline proxy to half. With the proxy set to half, we do get, wow, we do get full real-time playback. That's got a magic mask on it, it's got super scaling on it, and it's got noise reduction on there as well. So there we go. I'm impressed with that. If you'd like to see more, you want me to do a more in-depth comparison between the 3090 and the 4080, let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll uh, catch you next time.